Okay. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to um, Wargamer Shut Up and Build, uh, episode one. This is our inaugural episode, um, which is pretty awesome. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, create some bout, or well, some turf, basically. So what I've got here, and this is this is not the cheapest way to go about this. So um, a lot of what I want to do is I want to show people how to get a war machine table up and running um, on the cheap because with the cost of the models and the glue and all the other crap, you end up spending a lot of money and or at least a, a reasonable amount of money. And there's ways to kind of mitigate that. This is not the cheapest way to do that. However, um, if you're doing big projects, if you're doing um, you want to do a whole table like this, this might be a good option. Also, um, if you do this sort of strategy, you'll end up with basic materials for basically, well, for forever. So that's kind of the goal with this. Now, what we've picked up here is um, I've got these two, which are fine ballast and coarse ballast. Now there is a mid-grade ballast, and all this is are basically crushed up little rocks. So um, if you're wondering what ballast is, that's what it is. And um, the problem with the, actually sorry, yeah, the problem with the mid-grade is that it's hard to tell between the coarse ballast and the mid-grade ballast if you're not super close. So for general terrain, I think that the contrast between these two is going to be pretty pretty okay. And that should be alright. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to blend together um, our ground stuff. Now, um, to make this cheaper, to not do this route, and I'll explain kind of the, I'll break down some of the costs associated with doing it this way. Um, you don't have to go this route. The cheapest way to do this, um, or to do ground texture on, on general terrain pieces, is basically just take some of your sand. Um, even you just need the one kind of sand, really. You don't necessarily need two. Um, you you put it on, you paint it, and then you um, basically put a whole bunch of just regular flocking down. And that's and that's pretty good for most people. Um, what we're doing is we're, we're going to be mixing a bunch of different kinds of stuff. Um, between these three, as well as some extra stuff that I just happen to have laying around, um, we're going to create um, some turf that's got a bit more variation. So it'll, it'll look a little bit nicer, um, is the dream anyway. So each of these, well actually each of these guys in Canada at a local hobby shop. So this is probably the most expensive way to possibly buy this. But each of these is fourteen and a half, fifteen dollars um, So they're not cheap, but you get a whole lot in it. Um, if you compare to kind of the offerings from other companies, so um, here's Army Painter for example. This guy cost, okay, this guy cost me four fifty, which is actually not too bad. Um, so like, they're usually between four fifty and six dollars. If you go Games Workshop, it's gonna be more. So um, for example, we got this guy um, from Games Workshop ages ago, so it's ten bucks. Now I think they're fifteen, I wanna say. Um, something like that. And it comes with some stuff, like, um, when I bought this I thought this was a lot of stuff. I was super impressed with this and um, and to be fair, it has lasted quite a while. So um, this is for my regular hobby stuff. Not for big terrain projects, but um, there's the majority of what came in this is still here. Um, but when you compare to this, as an example, um, there's, there's really no comparison. So this, this was these guys are each, uh, these two are 12 65 12 95 and 13 so basically 13 bucks a piece. Um, and this is going to cost equal to or less than this these days, except the difference is, is huge. So I wonder if it actually says how much stuff is in here. It doesn't look like it. Um, now to be fair, if, um, yeah, minimum weight 15 grams, um, this is a lot more. Uh, probably at least 300 grams, 400 grams, maybe half a pound, something like that. So, just a huge amount of stuff in these versus this kind of thing, and these are going to be cheaper. Now, you could probably buy them online, you could probably buy them elsewhere um, for cheaper, but if you have the option to and you have a local train store or hobby store, keep them in business. I would I would support them there. But, um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these three guys, we're going to mix it in with just the random stuff I have. So, um... The, the thought is if you have any basic material laying around, you can kind of do this and it's not going to be super expensive. So I've got uh, burnt grass, field grass, scorched grass, grass grass, um, 
ash gray, which we will probably put in as well. Um, some leftover um, coarse, this was a coarse turf, but it's a slightly different color, so that's kind of good for us. And then this was a, a mix of field grass and burnt grass from whenever I mixed that. That would have been quite a while ago. But yeah, so that's what this, this uh, is about. Because we're going to be doing some major terrain projects, the, um, the idea is that we're going to make some, some ground texture that will be fairly consistent between our different projects, and um, it should look pretty awesome. So it's not going to be a precise science. We're just going to basically dump out a reasonable amount of this stuff. Now, um, you could just take a big vat, of, a big vat rather than like a smaller bit here, and you could just dump it all in there. However, there's so much stuff in here that I would rather just keep some of this laying around just in case. Um, not to mention that with the turf, um, you can kind of stick it in its moss patches, and that's pretty sweet. So, just a quick comparison. Um, I've put there's probably about the same amount of stuff in here now as there was in this, and we've used that much of it. So it's it, it's a crazy better deal to get this stuff. Um, again, if you don't have access to it um, and you can't shop online for whatever reason, that's kind of sucky, but um, regardless. So we're going to take some of this, this stuff that we have left over. And again, same thing, not precise measurements, just dumping it in. And you'll find that you'll um, get a lot of mileage out of this. Um, one other thing is that if um, you know, if you don't have the cash to draw on all these different basic materials, because um, I think I spent like seventy-five or eighty dollars today, and that's hopefully my fiance is not watching this. But um, it, it it's not a small investment if you do it this way. So it's had a little, oh, it's kind of packed in there. But um, if you do it this way, you'll have tons of stuff. Um, however, instead of spending thirteen dollars a piece for these ones, they do come in smaller packages. Um, I believe, I'm going to say, a package that's about this size, maybe about, maybe a little smaller, was like $5. So even if you wanted to blend these kinds of things together, um, you could do that, and you could do it reasonably inexpensively. Uh, I don't really put much of this in there. I'm going to put more of this. Um, you could still do it reasonably inexpensively, but, um, and it, it won't break the bank necessarily, so... In fact, I probably could have done that and not had all this extra left over, but, um, and that would have saved me probably $50, so it's, it's considerable amounts of money I could have saved. Um, however, again, because we're going to be doing some larger projects, for me, I think this is probably the best bet, because you do get quite a substantially better deal buying it in these big packages. Um, so we're just going to drop some of that in there. The brighter stuff is going to be really apparent, so you don't necessarily want to do that. And before we put in the flocking, I just want to kind of mix it up and see what our ground texture kind of is shaping up to look like. And again, um, it might have been wise to have used a bigger thing, but this is actually quite a bit of flocking, so... Um, yeah, so that's, starting to look, that's looking pretty good, actually. Got some nice variation between the colors when you throw it down and uh, do like a large area. It's gonna look like ground basically before we put this stuff in. Um, and there's a couple ways you could do this. You could you could not put this stuff in to this mix, and you could just sprinkle it on afterwards, and that would be okay. Um, but for me, um, I think that uh, I kind of like the lazy way, and that's just dump everything in here, see how it works out. So we're gonna take a fair amount of this battlefield's grass. Okay, and this is you want to be careful with doing large amounts of this stuff because it is, um, I believe they're just fiber like dyed fiberglass or painted fiberglass. So you don't want to be breathing this stuff in. Um, it's not gonna be very safe to to breathe in. And this is actually quite a densely packed. Um, the, the Army Painter stuff is pretty good for the value. Like for four dollars, you get, it looks like a little tub, and, but it actually, there's quite a bit of stuff in there. So we used maybe a quarter, not even a quarter of this stuff, and that's what we've got. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, I know that this one here isn't, at, at least 
Um, this style of container is no longer sold by Games Workshop. I don't know that they do the individual colors of blocking anymore. Um, I haven't really been keeping up with what Games Workshop's been doing in general. And this, the so if, if you can find this kind of stuff outside of Games Workshop, you're much better, better off. But um, the benefit of having a dark block like this, or a dark uh, static grass, is that it will darken everything in there. So it'll blend everything together, it'll darken it, and um, it'll look pretty vision. So. And again, we're just shaking it up, seeing how it looks. So that looks pretty awesome. Now there's still, so the some of the static grass actually is still pretty bright. Like little clumps in there and it hasn't quite been mixed in 100% because our, uh, our container is probably too small for what we're trying to do here. So I mean, bigger container is probably better, but um, I think uh, fitting a bigger container in here just to keep it in frame and show you guys is probably not the best move, so. And basically that's it. Like once uh, once you get to a point where you're happy with it, it looks blended. If you've got all this different stuff, um, it'll look natural. Not to mention that um, once you do um, put this stuff on your models or on your on your terrain bases, and and you use these guys for um, like little shrubs or moss or whatever, they'll blend right into what you're doing because the colors are already in there um, without looking. So they won't look out of place, and it won't look like you just stuffed the one random thing there. Um, this will give your, your ground a little bit more texture than just putting like sand and grass. So um, you want to, we'll, we'll go over how to use it, but um, but yeah, this is pretty, pretty awesome. So this is exactly what I was looking for. It looks like a big thing of moss. It looks pretty realistic. Um, and if you're not happy with it, you can just mix whatever else you want in. I don't think I'm gonna put in the ash gray actually. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep that up. But, uh, but yeah, that's basically it. So thank you for watching this, um, this ballast tutorial, or this, uh, well not ballast, this is the ballast stuff, sorry. This, um, turf tutorial. If you like, please comment, subscribe, thumbs up, all that stuff.